guys welcome back today we are doing a little q a video i'm very excited to do this one that this was requested a little q a uh over on instagram a little while ago i asked if anyone had any video ideas that they would like to see and i had a request for a q a so i put another poll up asking for questions uh so i've got them written down here in my little hobonichi weeks and let's just go ahead and see how we get on with this i am hoping hoping that we're doing okay here i have been struggling to find a spot where i can sit where the lighting isn't disgusting uh like way too bright and harsh or um or the sound isn't really terrible so i'm i'm struggling to find a good spot to film outside but i just really want to be out in, in the sun i don't know if you can see like the sun's on my arm here and it's like just the most delightful perfect warm autumn day and I just want to make the most of it if I can so I wanted to come and film outside and I thought this is the perfect video to do that because you don't really need to be looking down and seeing my journals the same as usual so we're out in the sunshine and we're enjoying the weather and it's just beautiful um so that's where we are we're outside doing a Q&A video and I really hope that the sound is going to be okay for this one Okay, so let's get into question one. I just listened back to the first part of this video to see if the sound was fine and it seemed to be okay. So here's hoping it is. Uh, so the first question is, if you could travel anywhere, where would you go? And this is like the hardest question because like how many places are like absolutely amazing all around the world? Like so many. Um, I would say that probably on like the top end of... James and my travel list is to go to the US. We would really love to go there one day. Um, but it's like one of those places, it's a country that's like, it's going to cost us a lot of money to go there. Um, and th it's so big. Like you just can't even, one holiday wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do it justice. So it's kind of a, a tricky one like that because we would love to go there. But we, I also want to like see all of it. And that's just not going to probably be a possible thing. You can't really see the whole of the United States in a couple of weeks. So, mm, going to be a tricky one. So, I don't actually have any idea where I would choose to go in the US um, at this point. I'd have to do a lot more research. But um, that's definitely right up there on the top of our list. Uh, also, the Netherlands. We would really love to go to the Netherlands because um, James's family, James's mum's side are Dutch. And so... Um, He's never been there, but his mum's family are Dutch, and so it would just be cool to kind of go and see the Netherlands. I don't know, just see where his, like, his Oma and Opa grew up, and his mum lived there when she was young, and things like that. So it would be quite cool to go and see all of that. I think it would be really fun. So those are two probably um, up the top of our list of places we'd like to go, but I mean, there's so many places, and I just haven't done remotely the research to be like yes this is where I would go you know I would need to do a lot more like looking into different places to decide for sure where I would go if I was going to travel anywhere in the world but US and the Netherlands would be right up there okay question two was are you of Christian faith yes I am I am a Christian I don't really have a whole lot more to say about that um, but I am I am Christian um, number three was, how did you make the commitment to journaling? The struggle is real over here. I absolutely get that. That is something that I probably wouldn't have understood as much until last year. Um, so as in, I, I understood that like it took time and effort, but I, um, I don't have the same life as everyone else and nobody else has my life either. And so, um, for me, I was kind of like, yeah, I just, it's a priority for me. I make it, I make it a priority and I do it. Um, and I never have journaled like every day in the sense of like, I keep up on top of my journaling every single day. I wish I did that. I don't, I often, like I, they'll have small stints where I can do that. But a lot of the time I am doing catch ups. I'm a lot of the time doing catch ups. It's not, I do not journal every day. Um, but I do journal very regularly, which keeps me semi on top of things. Um, but last year was when we had the we had two kids come and live with us for ten weeks, and that really gave me a new experience of how uh, different things can be. So when they were living with me, the time I had to journal was vastly, vastly, vastly more limited because I had two 
children who were living with me who needed my attention quite a lot of the time uh, when they weren't at school and when they were at school I I am fortunate enough that I get to be home and do the journaling and things like that all the time at home but you know there was also like housework and laundry so much more laundry with children it's unreal um and you know things like that that I would normally not have had that much to do at home in comparison still a lot of housework to do often that I just let slip by because journaling is more fun but um but with the kids like I can't just not do their laundry I can't just have them going to school in dirty clothes all the time you know whatever they go through towels like you wouldn't believe um and so I just got my coffee here um so I had a lot more to do and I was having to do a lot of driving and picking up and dropping off and all of that and so I really I really realized how it's not just a matter of what's your prior make journaling a priority because sometimes like things like children are going to be a priority and that's wonderful and valid um but how did I make the commitment to journaling um I realized how important it was to my mental health and it I found journaling in 2018 I believe 28 like I found art journaling and creative journaling and things like that in that time that was right after I lost my son and um, I found creating and making art again I used to ha I had loved doing that sort of thing when I was like a kid and a teenager and then I kind of lost it in my um, like early adult years I just didn't have the time well I assumed I didn't have the time I didn't make it a priority anymore it wasn't something I was told could be a priority you know it wasn't part of the the adults in my life's you know what I had seen modeled to me that creating and journaling and art that these things were really good for you and so I didn't see that and I didn't expect that that was something that adults did you know so I let all of that go and then when I lost my son I really needed to find something to kind of bring me out of that dark hole that I was struggling in and I found um, being creative again and it opened up a whole new world and it opened up like a new way of expressing myself that when I didn't have words to express my pain I had art to express myself. And so I really want to go back and see if I can find some of the early art stuff I did back in that time period. Because I don't know where it is, but I'm sorry if you can hear my chickens there. They're coming up behind me. Um, but yeah, that was where I found it again. And I realized how good it was for me. And in that realization of how good that was for me, I realized I actually need this. This is art making and creating is not just a luxury for me. It's a necessity to keep me sane and to keep me going in my life. So I chose to make that a priority. And I'm so glad that I do. And I continue to make that choice every day because obviously I could give it up at any time if I wanted to. Um, but I know how good it is for me and I don't want to let that go. Um, I've also since then read back some of my really old journals um, from not from 2018 I didn't really write a lot at that point it was more art making um, but some of my older journals from 2020 and things like that and when I read them I just am astounded at how much of life I have forgotten without writing it down I just wouldn't have those those parts of my life anymore and I feel like so sad that I didn't start this just years and years earlier I wish I had been doing this since I was a child um because it's just incredible going back through my life and seeing it written down and documented and and seeing things like I've I've what I've been journaling since my niece was born she's nearly three now and so her whole life is kind of been you know I don't document about her every day because I don't see her every day but I see her quite regularly and so she's in there quite a lot and just watching her you know I've got this whole book a whole book of rec recording her growing up in there and now I've got another niece Hazel and she will be growing up in my journals again and just the way you know at the beginning of 2020 when I started like making it a really regular thing where I was writing we didn't know COVID was going to happen then we didn't know the whole world was going to change and go into a lockdown pandemic situation like you just never know how life is gonna change and so I think I've gone kind of far away from this question but I'm gonna keep rambling um you never know and looking back I 
I love seeing how my life has developed and changed and everything that's gone on over the past like four and a bit years since I've been really regularly journaling. It's just, it's pretty amazing. And that helps me hold on to journaling. At the end of last year when I lost my daughter, um, I really felt like giving up journaling. I felt like I didn't want to document my life anymore. I didn't want to hold on to any of the memories. I just didn't, I didn't want to do it anymore. I wanted to quit everything. Um, but I told myself I had to give myself some more time to decide that. And I did give myself the rest of that month not journaling. I, I haven't really documented December at all. I documented up until her birth and then after that, nothing until January began because I just didn't want to. It was too hard. Um, and so I absolutely understand. I understand that. Um, sorry, I'm just checking where my chickens are. And I love my chickens, but I am still a little nervous of chickens. So if they got too close to me, I don't know how comfortable I'd be. I'm fine with them if I'm watching them, but if they're sneaking up on me, I think that I would probably scream and I don't want to do that. <laughs> Not on the video. So here's hoping they don't sneak up on me. Um, back to what I was saying. I, um, I didn't journal for that month of December and, sorry, I heard them move. <laughs> I didn't document for the month of December and I don't regret that because I honestly don't think I'd want to really read back on that month because it was just awful and painful. Um, so I'm okay with that. Although I do often tell people to document the hard stuff too. I think a certain level of hard stuff, yes, document that. But other stuff, if you don't want to, don't make yourself. Um, and that might, is that a question that's coming up? I can't remember. Let's just keep going. I'm just all over the shop with this. So sorry if this video is a little bit crazy. Um, but... I made the commitment to journaling because I looked back on life and I could see how everything changed and how I've changed and how life moves and the cycles of life and all of these things. And I just knew that actually I didn't want to give that up while I wasn't loving where I was at the time and what was happening in my life at the time. I know that I've been there before. Losing my daughter in December was my third child that I've lost. I've been there before. I know what that feels like and I know that you move through it. And as much as I still miss her deeply and am grieving her so much, um, I know that life will life just keeps going and I kind of want to keep documenting it. And I've made that commitment to documenting no matter what happens. It doesn't have to be much. Like, honestly... I don't have to do the big full spreads that I do. I, I enjoy it, so I do it. But honestly, it doesn't have to be much. I reckon that a great alternative, if you feel a bit overwhelmed by documenting every day in like a full journal, is like just stick to one page rather than a whole spread. Or a part of a page. It doesn't have to be a whole page. Um, and also things like five-year journals where you just get like a small section, that's amazing. And that will be, you will look back on that and be really grateful that you've kept that if you just, if you even just did a few sentences about each day. You will be amazed at how much you of that you would have forgotten and how much of that you're so grateful you kept. Um, also the collage calendar. If you guys have seen my channel, I've shared these things before. Collage calendar. It's just a, like a calendar. It's just a square. And you just throw stickers or drawings or words in it that just represent your day and it is another great memory keeping tool that's very like low pressure and low like it's not time intensive it's a small square on a page it's not that hard um so those are some suggestions if you are finding it hard to like keep a full a full daily journal where you are um what am I trying to say like writing a whole lot if that's too time intensive don't do that do it another way um, find a way that works for you. Write a line a day on your phone. Take a um, just a random notebook and just jot down bullet points of your day. All of these things, honestly, looking back at them, you will be really glad you had them because you forget so much more than you think you will. It's incredible. Okay, let's move on to the next question. I don't know if I answered that last question. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but I think it's time to move on. <laughs> Do you have a favourite book to read? That's a really hard one. I really wish I was a reader. I am not particularly a reader. I want to be, and some years I do better than others. 
my goal this year was to read I think like 16 or 18 books and it's April and I've read two so we're not doing well we're not doing well but you know we're coming into winter autumn winter now so hopefully maybe while it's cold or I'll pick up reading again I don't know I often do find this time of year is where I read a wee bit more though so maybe maybe I'll catch up um but I, I'm not a great reader I like you know some people I'm like they are like, oh yeah, I just read 134 books this year. And I'm like, that's two a week. That's more than two a week. How do, are you doing that? And I guess that's the thing is I have chosen to commit, commit myself to journaling. They choose to commit themselves to reading. So everyone chooses to where their priorities are and where they're committing themselves. And that's beautiful, wherever you love it. Um, but my favorite books to read a really good question I am not someone who really rereads typically so um I don't really reread things often I am intending on rereading the book Pollyanna this year I've read that one before a few years ago and I really loved it it's just so good and wholesome and sweet and I'm sorry if you can hear my chickens um I really loved it and I think that I kind of need that good sweet positive energy in my life so I'm I'm planning on rereading that sometime soon um, I, what else have I read that I really loved? I think I'm going to have to do, I really should have prepared myself for this so I knew what I was going to say, but maybe I'll do another something on Instagram and share some of my favorite books or something. I really loved the Austin Cleon books, the Still Like an Artist. I have that book and it's really, really wonderful. And I want to reread that one too, actually. So that's another one I very much recommend. It's a very good book. Um, I really love Linda Barry's books. I have read two of them and now the name of them is escaping me. There's my chicken. Can you see her down there? That is, that's Claudia. It's Claudia there. Um, she's noisy. Both of them are noisy actually. But that, that's Claudia over the back there. I think Audrey's gone. She's gone. Um, could you shush please, madam? Okay, sorry, I took a quick pause there because Claudia was just getting so loud that I just thought, okay, we need to take a wee break and reconvene. So here we are, favourite books. I was talking about the Linda Barry books, um, and I've forgotten the name of them, but I will, I will write them in the description below, some of the books that I really like. Um, Still Like an Artist, and then the I've read two by Linda Barry. And I'll see if there's any more books that I find. I'll look through my, like books that I've read list and I will pop any other books that I think are particularly good ones down below but I really did love um Pollyanna it's just so sweet I haven't read Anne of Green Gables but I really want to because that's just one of my favorite movies uh you know the Megan Follows one I just love it it's just the most beautiful story um and then I mean there are other other books and I just can't think of them right now and I should have written down a list so that I could tell you about I didn't so sorry about that oh look there's Audrey she's jumping up on the chair behind me great um they're they're both coming back now and they're gonna get loud again I bet oh well next question I've got them written in my little Hobonichi weeks here so that I can read them out for you guys the next question is if you could have a dinner party with anyone in the world who would be there I am not someone who overly follows like celebrities or famous people of any sort I'm very introverted and I don't I I would choose you guys really truly honestly that's not just being cheesy I would want to find a group of people who like journals I don't want to talk with people <laughs> I don't want to talk with people who I don't share any interests with who have I mean I enjoy I enjoy hearing about people who have very different lives to me a life to me that's fascinating absolutely fascinating but Honestly, I think my preference would be finding people who love creating and love journaling and love books and paper and things like that and being able to really have a shared experience and having a dinner party with people who love that sort of thing because I don't have people in my life, in my day-to-day -day life who are like that, who create regularly with, in the same way that I do anyway. Um, so I would be choosing, I would be choosing my journal people. That would be absolutely the best dinner party. Imagine a big dinner party full of everyone else who's doing the same sort of journaling and creating and we can just share tips and talk about our journals and show them to each other in person. That sounds like an absolute dream dinner party to me. 
So that's going to be my answer for that one. Do you have, here's my next question, do you have a go-to when you want to create but you lack inspiration? And I think that's a really good question. Um, I, I don't have a firmly established go-to that I know that this is what I do. Um, however, I know that last year, and this is going to come up in a future question as well. Last year, I did the iCAD challenge and having just one little card that I just collaged on every day was, it felt like a very fun warm up for myself in creating. I really enjoyed that. So I think finding a small creative warm up that you do um, is a really good idea. I also really like in my phone book, you guys may have seen my phone book of masterboards that I make where I just glue down random scraps. I find that is a really great way to creatively warm up as well. Um, speaking of warm up, it is getting really hot out here and I might need to take my jersey off soon. But um, I really do like, I really do like doing something really basic and simple where I just stick paper or mark making also is fun. Just like, you know, doing repetitive doodling on some paper. I don't recommend putting it directly in your journal because I think that puts pressure on yourself. I really think that that is like, oh, now it has to be perfect and that can hold you back if you're doing something directly in your journal. But doing something on scrap pieces of paper, on little journal cards, on um, things like that, they I think that that's a great way because then if it is ugly and you hate it, who cares? You can throw that piece of paper away, but you wouldn't you wouldn't feel so fine with it if it was in your journal. You'd be like, oh no, I have to try and cover it. Oh, I don't hate, I hate this journal now. Oh, it always is going to see this and I'm going to hate it. So if you are looking for a way to like build up your inspiration and just to do something creative, make it really low pressure and don't put it in your journal. That's my tip there. Don't put it in your journal. Make it on something that you're quite happy to throw away if you really hate it and you hate the whole experience. But if you hate it, like, take some lessons from it. What did you hate about it? What can you learn from it? But also, there's just no pressure of having it perfect, you know? You don't have to have it perfect. It's not on anything that you're supposed to try and keep. So, that's my my tip. Do some... I really enjoyed iCAD where I was just collaging um, every day. And I really like making marks on paper or co just sticking down scraps because there's always 3,000 million paper scraps for me on my desk or in the boxes around my desk. It's a little bit chaotic, but if you grab those and you just stick them down, that's it. That's good. That's a good way to start your day. Um, So that would be a creative thing to do if you're lacking inspiration. It's just plopping down some bits somewhere that you're not going to feel precious about them. So that would be my tip there. Uh, then I have the next question is, what's the transport like for rural living where you are? How do you get from the north to the south island? And back again. Uh, so I am in, I do live rurally. Obviously not all of New Zealand is rural, um, but I live rurally. So there is not public transport here at all. There's, there is a shuttle, I believe, that runs into the main city. I used to take that when I was a teenager, but I would never now because it's ridiculously expensive um it's like an hour, it's just over an hour drive to get to the main city uh or a main city the city Christchurch here in New Zealand is the city I'm closest to um I live about an hour just over an hour away from there um probably maybe an hour and 20 minutes hour and 15 something like that um and it, I, I live nearer, nearer to a small town. There's a small town called Akaroa and that is about 25 minutes away from where I live. And so I can go there, but transport, sorry, get back to the actual question, Lydia. You're just describing where you live too much. The transport, there is no public transport in the area I live other than a shuttle bus that runs from Akaroa to the main city. And that's a lot of money to get on that so it's much cheaper if you can drive which I can so I choose drive um getting from the north to the south island you typically fly I mean you can take the ferry and people do if you want to bring your car across obviously you'll take the ferry so if you were moving between the city uh to, between the islands you would probably take the ferry um but the ferry is also ex I mean flying is expensive between the islands fairly expensive I would say um, you can get good flights on occasion. You can get cheap flights, but it's still pretty expensive. But the ferry is 
expensive also and it's long. So from Christchurch, which is the nearest city to where I live, I would drive about an hour and 20 minutes to get to the airport, probably an hour and a half maybe to get to the airport. And then to get to Wellington, which is at the bottom of the North Island. So I'm in the South Island, the North Island, at the bottom of the North Island. It's about a 50 minute flight um, to Wellington. And if I was going to Auckland, which is the city in the top of the North Island, it's about an hour and, hour and a half, I think, to get there. So that's much, much better than if I tried to drive and then take a ferry and then drive. So if I wanted to drive to Wellington, it would take me probably about seven hours to get to the where the ferry is driving. And then on the ferry is like four hours, I think, um, to get to Wellington. That pulls into Wellington Harbour. So it would take a, it's a big day. It's a lot of day. And the ferry is, my experience of being on the ferry, which I have done a number of times because I did move to Wellington for a while when I was 17. Um, people are just being sick. <laughs> You're just sitting around while everyone's feeling seasick. So it's not like a really pleasant experience. They do play our movie that you can watch. And if you get on one of the one of the ferries, the Inter-Islander Ferry, you have to pay to watch the movie. The Blue Bridge Ferry, it's free. So I always opt for the Blue Bridge because it's a boring four hours without a movie in there. Um, but again, you don't choose the movie. You just watch whatever they've got on. I guess these days, I haven't been in quite a while on the ferry. It's been a long time. So these days, you would probably be able to just watch stuff on your phone. But back when I did that, that wasn't really an option. You didn't watch stuff on your phone the way you do now. Again, that was back when I was using the ferry, I think the last time I went on the ferry was probably 15 plus years ago. So just smartphones have come a long way since then. Um, so no, not 15. Sorry, that's a lie. Probably 12 years ago, 12 or 11 or 12 years ago was probably when I was last 13. I don't know. Between, between 10 and 15 years ago was when I was last on the ferry. It's been some time and smartphones have developed and people having, you know, Wi-Fi and internet connectivity on phones has changed since then um so yeah I recommend flying if you're going between the islands it's definitely just way quicker and honestly it's a similar price if you're just going if you're if you're not wanting to take a car it's a similar price if you're wanting to take a car on the ferry it's an extra like two hundred dollars or more so it's way more expensive but it means you have a car but honestly just hiring a car is probably worth it if you're not there for too long so that's how we have to get between the islands. It's not, it's kind of a pain because it is really quite expensive to go between the islands. So I don't go often, not often. I went to Auckland last year. <clears throat> James and I went to Auckland for the Backstreet Boys concert last year, which is good. Sorry, I'm getting really uncomfortable sitting on the ground here. Um, but we don't go very often because it does cost a fair amount. Like I think our flights to get to Auckland and back in New Zealand dollars, so you'd have to figure out what that was in your currency, but I think it was about, um, I think it cost us about $600, $700, I think it was closer to $700 to get the two of us to get there and back. So it it's in within our own country and it's an hour and a half flight. So it's really pretty expensive. Um, we were a bit horrified at how much it was going to cost us to do that, but I mean, it, I, it's, it's just what it is, it's expensive. Next question, uh, you've said before the nearest Kmart is ages away, same for groceries, yes, so it's the, it's that hour and 20 minutes to get to probably the nearest Kmart and uh, the main supermarkets, there is in Akaroa, the little town 25 minutes away, there's like a very, very small grocery store, um, which doesn't give you very much selection and it, everything is quite pricey, so um, we typically will drive and probably a lot of you guys are like an hour and 20 minutes, that's not even far. Because I know in other countries, people just expect to drive further. In New Zealand, people don't. We just expect things to be really close. Um, I don't know, I think, it's a, I think it is a different thing culturally, perhaps, between different countries. So that that's maybe just my perspective, I think it's far. Um, and like, it's something we don't do often. We go like once every like fortnight or so into the city to do our main grocery shop. And then if there's anything I need in between times, I will just go to Akaroa. I go to Akaroa once a week anyway for my pottery class. So while I'm there, I'll just pick up anything that I need extra from the little tiny four square supermarket that we have there, which is very little. Um, yeah, so groceries is also kind of far and we don't do them often. So I definitely am like a bulk buy person because I know it's going to be two, three weeks before I go to the supermarket again. 
Next question. If you could chat to any artist, living or dead, who would your top type top five be? That's a really good question, which again, I haven't thought through the answer of, and maybe I should have. So let me try and think off the top of my head. Um, artists living or dead. I mean, I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to come back to this. You're going to see me pop a clip in later on when I've thought about this. So there'll be a clip popped in here when I've thought about it. But let's move on for now because otherwise I'm going to sit here for 40 minutes just trying to think. Next question. Uh, what books inspire you to create? And I should have brought some of those out here. So maybe I'll add a clip of this in too. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a clip in of some of the art books that I love looking through that I have. So you'll see that. Okay, so this question is what books inspire you to create? So I, I, there are just myriads of books, honestly. Um, but I'm going to share with you guys these ones that are just on my bookshelf that I'm actually really excited that I had this question because it made me pull them out again. They were kind of high and awkward, but it made me pull them out. And so now I'm, I'm like, I really want to read these again and just dive into them because, oh, they were so good. So, uh, let's just go down the pile, shall we? Still Like an Artist by Austin Cleon. I think I mentioned that one. Um, it's really easy to read because there's so many like large texts and visuals and only quite small amounts of writing, but it's very impactful writing. Um, so this, and it's about creating in general. It's probably maybe leans... I don't know. Does it lean more to writing? I don't remember. It's it's just about creativity as a general thing, though. So it's a really wonderful book. Totally recommend reading it if you haven't already. Here's two others. And I've read one of the others and absolutely intend to read the, the other one as well. Um, but I only own this one. I love that it's in a square format. I don't know. It's just very interesting. But... Uh, this book is very like very inspiring with creative thinking, so that's a real good one. This is a Ken Doan book. His art is just absolutely stunning. So two of these, uh, these two here are ones who are artists that I find very inspiring, their art very inspiring to look at. So they are also going to be included in my question about if you could chat to any artist living or dead, who would you your top five be? And sort of just taking that question as, five artists that you really like because I, I don't know enough about them personally to know if I would want to talk to them or not but I really love their art so we'll we'll talk about that in a minute but these are books that are really inspiring so this is Ken Doan and I'll just give you like a quick little peek in here just he's an Australian artist and my goodness I just love the colour and just the I don't, I can't, like, just the, the essence, that childlike essence that, um, his art has, it's, it looks like it should be really easy to do, but it just absolutely isn't, um, but it's, it's stunning, his art is, look at that, oh my gosh, it's just, to me, really breathtaking, this, this type of art, look at that, I can't even describe how much I'm in love with that, like, I know everyone has absolutely different opinions on what good art is, and I know a lot of people see good art as maybe like realism. That is just not really my taste in art. I do have some art pieces that are realistic that I think are beautiful, but this is this, the color and the texture and composition in these really just makes my eyes dance. It's just beautiful. So Ken Doan is... This book is, is amazing and Ken Doan is amazing. Um, this book here is a book I bought after seeing an, an exhibit by Joanna Margaret Paul. Again, fabulous. And then we've got um, Syllabus by Linda Berry. I did also talk about this one briefly. This one was the best one that I've read. I read Making Comics or Comic Books or something um, by Linda Berry as well. I would love to read some of her other books, but Syllabus I think was my favourite um, and I just adored reading it. It's it's like it's in a comp book. It's the size and shape of a comp book. And it's just the paper is that same kind of quality. It's on lined paper. I don't know. It's a fabulous read to make you get creative and think creatively. And I absolutely couldn't recommend this one enough either. So Syllabus is another fabulous book by Linda Berry. Fabulous book. So those would be my books that I'm just recommending off the top of my head here. Um, 
and of course there'll be others but those are some books that inspire me to create so think of those uh then my my oh what was the other question there oh if you could chat to any artist living or dead who would your top five be i'm just gonna go with who are five artists i really love because like i said before i don't know if i um i don't know if i know enough about them personally to know if i'd actually want to have a conversation with them or not but Ken Doan is one of them. His art just inspires me greatly. I am absolutely obsessed. He's obviously gone into a lot of like fashion and clothing and fabrics and things, but his paintings just blow my mind. This, oh my gosh, it's just incredible. And from here, from here, I'm going to say that this down here is a little portrait of Vincent van Gogh. He's another one on my list. Van Gogh's art also is just incredibly inspiring to me and beautiful and I would love to get like a proper art book of Vincent Van Gogh's as well. One day I will. Um, I actually already might have one somewhere now that I think about it. I think I did get one from an op shop but I don't know where it is currently. Um, but I, I love Van Gogh's art. I really do. Uh, so I've written down Van Gogh. I've written down Ken Doan. I have also written down... Um, Joanna Margaret Paul, which is the, this is her book. She is an artist who lived in New Zealand. She's a New Zealand artist. Um, she's no longer alive, um, but she actually lived in, for a short period, she lived very close to where I live, like very close. And um, I went to the art gallery in Christchurch while they had an exhibition of hers. And I didn't know anything about her. I wasn't going for her exhibition. I was just going for um, just to have a look around really and I came across her exhibition and I just sat in there for so long because I just couldn't stop looking at her art it was beyond gorgeous to me it's really like um simple things like vignettes of rooms and I don't know it just this gate I saw this painting in the exhibition of this gate and oh it's, a, it's the most simple things. She was also a photographer, um, but her art was just so beautiful to me, and I just couldn't stop looking at it. I was there for a very long time looking at her art. This one here, I believe, was very close. Yes, very. this is Rose of Barry's Bay. This is very close to where I live. Um, I actually think she might have lived in the, in the little tiny bay that I lived in briefly, or very nearby anyway. Um, but this one is in, from the area where my husband works is in Barry's Bay. So like, it's very close to where we live. And so looking at her art, especially from our area was really inspiring to me and really, very beautiful. Um, I, like I said, I spent absolutely a phenomenal amount of time looking at her art and her photography while it was in the art gallery in Christchurch. It was absolutely stunning. Um, so interesting and this book doesn't do it justice in the sense that they have really small pictures I feel I don't know why they don't have more like full pages I think they should because her, her images are just stunning but uh, I can't even show it to you properly but it was really really gorgeous and I do want to go through and read this book too because I haven't actually read it I went to the exhibition and just immediately bought the book right there and then because I was like I can't I can't leave this art behind. I need to be able to keep looking at it. It just really filled me up and made me just feel something quite deep. And I really loved it. So I just want to, I want to read this. So now I've pulled it out. I'm going to go through it and read it because I think it will be a fabulous read. So this one's going to be coming out as well. So those were, I said, Vincent van Gogh, Joanna Margaret Paul, Ken Doan. Um, David Hockney is a British, I believe he's British, um, painter, and I read a book about him a year or two ago, and his art, again, just the, uh, it's beautiful, you just need to have a look at it, some of his art, I mean, I prefer more, uh, some more than others, um, it was a book, now, what was the book called that I read, it was something to do with spring, and painting in the springtime, and things like that, and it was just really lovely, his springtime paintings are phenomenally beautiful, I absolutely love them. So David Hockney's another one. And then Sandy Hester, she's a YouTuber. And again, her style of painting just makes my eyes happy. I just love her art so much. Um, so I haven't watched any of her videos for a wee while, but I do want to go back and read, uh, watch some of them because 
I used to just watch them absolutely religiously as soon as they came out, and I haven't for a wee bit. But I, I just think her art is absolutely gloriously beautiful. So I do want to look at that too, some more of, of hers. But I will have her YouTube channel linked below. I bet a lot of you guys already know who she is. But if you don't, I will have her YouTube channel linked. She's just fabulous. Um, so those are the artists that I would probably choose to talk to. And it's more, it's more these are artists that I really admire their art. I, again, don't know them personally, but or would ever be able to because some of them are not alive. But I just absolutely love their art and I think it's so beautiful and inspires me. So those are the five artists I'm going to choose. What advice would you give to someone in discovering their own artistic style? This is such a good question. And one I have thought about a certain amount. Um, I would say that my advice for discovering your own artistic style is to just try everything try everything. If you see something you like the look of that someone else has done, try it. See how it feels for you. How do, Does it come naturally to you? Does it not come naturally to you? Do you actually like it when you do it or do you just like it when they do it? Um, play with everything and just experiment endlessly because I don't think that anyone, um, I don't think that there is any one way that's good to do anything, especially in art. Just like, just experiment all the time keep learning all the time. Like I would say that I was somebody who made A5 one signature journals and that was my style. And this year I've thrown that completely out the window and I've said all year I'm not going to use any, well, for my for my proper journaling. I've got a small, I've got some art journals that are A5. But for my daily kind of journaling, I'm not doing that at all. I'm going to just totally throw that idea that I always do out the window and try out everything else because I I had been doing that for four years. And so that was what I considered probably my style, but I it, it doesn't have to stay that way. What if there's something else I like? That just happened to be what I tried first and enjoyed it, so stayed with it. But who knows what else there is? So this year I am experimenting and I'm having so much fun with that. I have done big books and small books and wide books and I've got more planned which I can't wait to try out as well um so yeah there's just this just keep experimenting and and don't get hung up on this idea of finding your style I think people really do get hung up on that but I think that your style is going to come out in anything that you do Unless you're like directly copying a page. Like if you just see somebody else's page and you directly copy that. Even then you're going to add some of your own flair to it. I know you will. Because you can't help it. You can't help it. The way you the way you position something or glue something down. Or the way you your handwriting looks. Or anything like that is going to make it yours. It's going to give it your own style. And I think people get really like, oh, I don't have a style, I don't know what my style is, um, you do, it's just whatever you make is your style, there's, you don't have to be set in stone on anything, um, just enjoy whatever you're doing, and experiment endlessly, don't stop experimenting, and I think the thing is, is that people think that people who they have a recognizable style, um, don't need to experiment anymore, like, I, I, I want to, and honestly, the way, actually, I think, that all my journals look the same. If I look back through them, they none of them look the same. I feel like I'm always changing in my style. And I love that. So I don't know, maybe maybe people look at my things and think you don't have a style. You just are always changing. Um, but I think probably that some people will look at my at my journal pages and think that you have a, I have a set style of journaling. And I actually don't if you go through all of it. There'll be similarities. There'll be threads that run through that look similar. But just experimenting is so good. So just play around and experiment and you'll find things you like that you want to like add in repeatedly through your journals and you'll find things you don't like that you won't really add in much ever again. Um, but your style will still be there regardless of what you do. So just play around and your style is there. And often you can't see your own style but others can see yours. So I think that this whole idea of style and discovering your style is overrated and and it puts a pressure on creating that people don't need and actually you already have it you just don't see it yet other people can see it probably though so um don't don't worry about that too much just have fun and play and experiment all the time that's all I can say about that next question 
uh what oh, this one i really love this question too i've loved all the questions don't get me wrong again sorry moving around and i have my pajama pants on yes my rule is i have to get dressed on the top half <laughs> For these sorts of videos, I just need to be dressed on the top half. So I'm still wearing my comfortable pajama pants, even though it's like 10.30. Um, so this question is, what are some challenges you've participated in? And which ones did you get the most out of on a personal level? And which ones were more challenging artistically? And this is a great question. And again, I haven't thought this one through all that well. But I'm going to just go with the ones I can think of. So they said things like the 100 day challenge, one little word, iCAD, things like that. So iCAD is index card a day, in case you were wondering. Um, there's so many challenges out there. And I think challenges are a fantastic thing to be a part of. Um, they build such community and they um, can just spark ideas that you might not have thought of at all. So I definitely recommend trying out some challenges, but also being okay if you flop at them. A 100 day challenge I have never successfully completed. I cared, never successfully completed. Um, so things like that, but that's not really the main point of it for me, is it gets me creating and thinking in different ways. So I think that's the main thrust of it. Um, and I would like to, so which ones were more personally satisfying and which ones were more creative challenge artistically? So I would say the one that instantly comes to mind when I say more personal, on a more personal level, which one did I get out of was the one little word. I have done that a few times and some years I don't finish it and some years I have. I'm moving again. Sorry guys, getting back to over here. Um, so on a personal level... I'm just going to wait for this truck to go past. Okay, just had to let the quad bike go past. So, what are some of the challenges? Oh, yes. Okay, back to the question. Uh, so, on a personal level, one little word was my most satisfying and... What was the word? Personal on a... Yeah, what I got the most out of on a personal level. One little word. It's hosted by Ali Edwards. It's certainly a big one for me and I will probably keep on doing that one every year because I just, I got so much out of it in 2021. It was really, really big for me going through that program and just having that program to keep me accountable to my personal growth, I think was really valuable to me, really worth the money. Um, so I certainly hugely recommend that to anyone, to anyone. I think it's really good. Um, so I did that one then and I have, then I didn't finish it for 2022 or 2023. Um, 2023, I just didn't document things how I would have liked to, but I did sort of hold on to my word throughout the year, which was, was really good. Um, this year I'm doing it again. And once again, I'm having a very satisfying year with it. It's feeling really like I'm feeling a lot of personal growth through it. And I do think this year I'll probably complete it. And I am documenting it and it's just been wonderful. So that is something I'm really enjoying on a personal level. It, it does push you creatively a, a bit, but I think it is certainly more to do with personal development than creative challenge. Um, so it depends on what you're looking for, I guess. If you're looking for more of a creative challenge where you're given prompts and things like that to push you creatively, I don't think One Little Word is probably the best program for that, but I do think it is very good on a personal growth level that includes creativity. So I hugely recommend it. I love it so much. Uh, what were some challenges that were more challenging artistically for me? Um the iCAD, the index card a day, last year again, that was that was my first year where I got like a good way through it. And I think I would have completed the challenge if I didn't have those two children move in with me. Um, And that was, it's totally fine. Like it was great having those kids come and live with us. It was a beautiful, different experience, but it did take up a huge amount of my time. And the index card a day was not my priority. I was trying to keep up in my journaling because I knew that this was something I wanted to be able to look back on and remember. It was a huge time of change in my life, having two kids come and move into my house and I was doing school runs and dealing with a lot um, in the background of in, from having them live with me. There was a lot of resistance from other people, um, which was very challenging and hard. 
and then I also found out right uh, about two weeks into having those kids move there I found out I was pregnant and that was a huge surprise um, and so I went through a very complicated pregnancy in that time as well and then obviously the loss of my daughter in December so I wanted to have those memories written down so that became my priority over index card a day sorry getting back to where I'm actually supposed to be talking to you guys about I get so sidetracked by things um but I was really loving that and I will certainly be doing that one again this year absolutely no doubt in my mind I really loved doing the index card a day challenge I'm wondering about cutting the index cards in half and doing a half size because I have quite large ones um but I don't know I don't know yet I just found it very satisfying creatively um because it like I was saying earlier it was it became a warm-up for me every day it got me um it got me doing something every day and I had low expectations on myself of how it had to look it didn't have to look any sort of way I was just sort of sticking stuff on and just seeing where it went and it was a really great challenge for me I used a lot of like my interesting magazine images up on there I don't know I just found it very satisfying creatively I really enjoyed it and I was sad that I didn't get to finish it but it's fine like I've there's more years this year I'll probably do that one again because it was a really fun challenge so I definitely recommend the index card a day I wanted to do that 100 day project this year and I think that I I just wasn't ready it was too soon after losing my daughter and I just didn't have that kind of emotional capacity I don't even know if I would have it yet I don't know um but that I decided not to do it this year I really thought about it I thought about it very deeply but I in the end decided I just don't want to put like a pressure on myself right when I'm not feeling very good so we're moving on from that one there's always next year there is always next year and then another one which a lot of you guys won't have it's not a challenge that's out there in the world for people to see I'm sure other people have done it but it was something I just challenged myself to over on Patreon in February um, where I found a book and my challenge to myself was to use the whole book to like use up all of it and that pushed me in creative ways that was so exciting for me I'm, I'm planning on doing another one like that here on YouTube at some point um, it that was it took me about five videos I think I think it went over five or six videos um, using up this whole book and it really got me thinking it got me creating in ways I hadn't thought about it created journals and I created um, tags and journal cards and masterboards and all of these things that just pushed me out of my normal sorry my cat's just coming out of the cat door just beside me um, the animals they're always distracting me here um, but that was another challenge that I really loved so keep your eyes out because I think I'm going to do another one of that for YouTube because I just felt so much like personal creative energy from that challenge it felt really satisfying so I want to do that again so keep your eyes out because I think I'll do that again um my neck that's that's some of the challenges that are instantly coming to me that I really loved but there have been so many others too like I do prompt week over on Instagram that's a that's a monthly challenge that I do and I do really love doing prompt week I know that I have I, I haven't I don't do it all the time but I know Belinda from Visualized NZ she on a Monday does her deal it up challenge and that is a once a week challenge that she runs that I have done more in the past I haven't done it so much recently and I'm not sure why because I really loved it and I will do it again um but um that always was a favorite thing to do on a Monday this like new beginning of the week little challenge set that she set on her youtube channel loved doing that so definitely look at that um allison from aj's inspired life is doing a item a month challenge at the moment which i think is very very cool and i am semi participating i can see when i look through my journals that on the pages i've done i'm like oh i didn't put a quote on there why not so i may go back and add them in later um, this month, her month is putting a, a quote on every day in her journal. And how fun is that? Like, how fun to be having that thing to consciously think of. Um, here's my little cat. She's just coming out to join us. This is Tweed. Um, so she has been putting quotes on... Oh, she's going to knock my camera down. If she, she wants to sit... You're sitting up on this outside couch. And this is where she normally likes to lay in the sun. Um, but she can't lie there right now because it will knock everything over. Um, so she's just down there on on the veranda next to me now 
um, as I was saying, Alison from AJ's Inspired Life is doing an item a month and it's making you use, for this month, for the month of April, uh, it's a quote every day in your journal. And I absolutely love that. And I can't wait to see what she does next month as well. We, I did personally, I just did stamps last month, like using my, my rubber stamps and things. And that was really fun. So these are just some suggestions of fun challenges that I've been enjoying. And I will leave the links to the people I've mentioned. If I can remember down below, I will probably have to watch this video in its entirety to edit it all because there are so many parts I'm going to be having to cut out because I'm all over the show and cats and chickens and vehicles make this hard outside. Um, but that's fine. We are getting near the end now, friends. We're getting close to the end. Um, so what does your ideal creative day look like? That's another great question. My ideal creative day would be one that I just feel a lot of creative energy and flow in. Um, this year, I have been changing things up just a touch for myself. So um, often I had been in the past being like, how much I just need to be in my in my craft room. I need to just be making or just sitting in there trying to do stuff all day. Like I just have to be trying to get things done journaling, making stuff, whatever. And I was getting to a point where I was finding myself sometimes being a little bit like, because again, I don't go out and have another job. This is what I do, um, which I'm so fortunate to do. Um, I was at a point sometimes where I was like, I just, nothing's coming to me. I just feel absolutely like nothing's in my brain. There's nothing there. Um, so I have been giving myself a lot more balance because I think balance is super important in a creative life and just creating all day I found was actually stifling me creatively quite a lot um, because there wasn't a balance. So now I have been very much enjoying spending my mornings typically creating. So I will go and once James has gone to work I will make myself my coffee and I will start filming first thing in the morning that's when the lighting is best in my craft room so that's when I typically film is between like 9 and 12 I'll try and film a video and then after that I will try and come up with something else and that is good and I enjoy that and at the moment I've been loving making Patreon mail for this month ah I'm loving it so much it's that's really giving me a great like creative energy at the moment coming up with fun things to send in the mail so so much fun um so if you are wanting to be on the mail tier for Patreon go and check that out because it is making me happy it's making me really happy creating stuff and the that um, also things like making journals and things like that. Um, things that I don't have to film happen in the afternoon. So a lot of the writing in my journal happens in the afternoon because the light is awful in there at that time. So just things that I won't be filming, but I can still do. And I typically like to finish up at the moment. I used to try and push out in there until James got home. Now I've been trying to finish up a little bit earlier and then go and do other things with my day. Other things. It's wild. Um, I have been enjoying being in my garden a little bit. I am no gardener at all, but we got a veggie pod recently. I will take a little clip of my veggie pod. I want to share that with you guys because that has been bringing me a lot of joy. Um, so I've been, we've been building our veggie pod and putting plants in there. I have taught myself how to use the weed whacker. That was very exciting. Um, I tried baking some bread recently, which wasn't amazing, but I'm going to keep trying. I'm not a bread maker. Like I'm not, I'm not talented at this, these things, but I want to be. So I'm going to keep trying. Um, and what else have I been doing? I mean, I take my pottery class. I made this mug. I made this quite a while ago. So this is a bit of an older version of the of the mugs that I am making now. So this is a bit less... Like, it's still it's still a perfectly good mug. But I, I make different things a little bit now. Um, so I have my pottery class once a week. Um, and I don't know, I've been just trying to do things outside of my like journal realms, you know, things that make me feel a little creative, but in other ways. So like I have been wanting to try and like figure out how to like do my own clothes mending. I really want to pick up embroidery again. I used to do that a long time ago. I really want to try like some, I really want to learn how to do like folk art painting. My mum used to do that when I was little and she was just so talented and she doesn't do it at all. She probably hasn't done it in 25 years, maybe. 
um, and she shipped though because it was so beautiful and I really want to learn how to do that. So I think my ideal creative day would be to do my filming in the morning and to play in my journal for, for an hour or two after that and then do something completely different from journaling. Something to just like push me to challenge my mind to go elsewhere a little bit. I think that's really creatively satisfying. And then in an ideal creative day, but not a realistic day, I would like make something fantastic for dinner, you know? Something really new and interesting and and that would be really cool. But I often it is the same old things over and over again because I get to that time of day and I'm like, I'm tired, I can't be bothered, so I just make something easy. Um, but that would be really very fun creatively too when I can, when I have plenty of time to make dinner in a fun way. But, you know, I think most of us who have been making dinner every day or most days for the last very long time get a little bit bored of it and I would really love for that spark of interest to come back and sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't but in an ideal creative day it would be there. In case you wanted to see this was the view I was sitting looking out at while I was filming this little Q&A. In case you've not seen a veggie pod before this is a veggie pod and so James built the stand and we put the plastic part together in the roof thing. Uh, it's very cool. Sorry if this is real wobbly. And I know a lot of you guys are probably not interested in gardening. And neither am I typically. But let's have a quick look in here. So it opens up like this. And here is my little vegetables. I'm so proud of them and so excited. These are our little spinach. Then we have some broccoli, we have carrots, like little short nubby carrots, and then some beetroot. And then over here, um, we've since, you know, we planted all of those ones first. And then here we've got some more carrots and some rocket, which hopefully will come up. We will see. Um, but I'm very, very excited about all of these because um, I'm not a gardener. And I'm really proud that we grew these from seeds. It's just so exciting. But I just thought I'd share that because that is part of what my ideal creative day looks like is coming out here and tending to my little garden babies uh so they are very exciting in my life right now my goodness i just found this look do you see that that's a little rocket coming up and i'm so excited don't tell james i was out here without him because he'll be sad that he didn't see it with me for the first time but ah there's a little rocket coming up and i'm so excited There's the cat. We are also trying out growing our own mushrooms at the moment. So as you can see, they are really weird looking and they are growing out of this box. It's so weird. But only, it was like a flat box five days ago and it is just ballooning out of there like nobody's business, it's crazy. So that's also really exciting growing our own mushrooms and here is my little herbs and look here's the chickens claudia on the left audrey on the right that's audrey hello audrey um but here's my little herbs and they're looking a bit flat because my chickens keep sitting on them and i need to put some little prongs in there but these are my chives this is just a beautiful summer daisy oh, what was it called summer angel i think and we were given that when skylar was born um again i need to do some work with these but this is my little basil i've got a little thyme over here rosemary and then these sweet little pansies which some of you guys will have seen before um from my printables from february so that's my little herb garden situation in pots on my veranda okay next question how do you decide how much journaling to share personal pages versus shareable pages um i that's another really good question. I am somebody who naturally is quite open to sharing a lot of what's going on. Things that I don't share are more things that are happening in other people's lives. So things that aren't mine to share, I ideally won't share them. Um, because that's not my place to share that on the internet. But a lot of what goes on, I mean, there are still personal things of mine too that I don't share. And if I am going to write something that's really personal and private, I'll often tuck it in a pocket uh, or put it behind a flippy thing or something like that. So that um, 
when I am sharing my pages on YouTube or Instagram, the really private stuff isn't visible. Then there are also other times where I do put it really visible and then you'll see it on Instagram and I've kind of like redacted it. I've blurred those lines out so that people can't see it. Um, because there are personal stuff. Like when I had those kids living with me, I didn't want to like share a lot about them, about their names and, you know, things like that because that's their personal life. Um, and so I wasn't going to just openly share all of that. I shared parts, but minor parts. Um, so I would say that I I write whatever I want to write, but I think about, is this something that I want everyone to know? And if it is not, it will get tucked away somewhere privately um, on my journal page. I And I think that's a really great way of still including it in your journal and being able to share your journal without having to share all of your journal. I think really utilize the pockets and the flips and um, things underneath things so that not everything is visible. And I think that can be really good for writing more private things without having to share it with everyone. Um, but overall, I would say I'm naturally a sharer. I like sharing things. I like sharing my life with people. I I don't know. I've, I think I've always been like that. I think I've always been someone who is naturally quite vulnerable and, and likes sharing. So I don't have a lot that's private, but there is some things. Again, it is vastly, the vast, vast, vast majority of anything I don't want to share is because it is, it belongs to somebody else. It doesn't belong to me. So that is, that is my thoughts on that. I just like to share. But if you don't want to, hide it or put it in, a, have a whole different journal just for like the personal thoughts part maybe if you don't want to hide it either. Some people don't like to add in pockets and tippins because it makes their journals bulky. So don't write it in a but write it in a different journal or just don't share pages that make you feel uncomfortable if it's making you feel uncomfortable don't share it um yeah that's my thoughts on that uh this is the last question i think best recent finds and again absolutely should have thought of this absolutely should have brought stuff out what are my best recent finds okay so the last question that i'm going to answer are recent finds that you really love so this one, uh, I feel a bit weird about it. Like, I don't know if I would, I don't know exactly if I count these as recent finds that I really love. I mean, yes, they are, but some of them are not that recent. I'm trying to do everything that it is just from this year. We're in the first, you know, third of the year still. Um, but a lot of these things you guys will have seen from me. So I don't know. I just feel like a lot of the things I've got this year are like repeats of things from before. They're not like new finds, you know, exciting new things. Um, but these are good things that I really like, so I'm going to go ahead and say them anyway. This, I've had plenty of these Glitterific Folk Art paints before. This is my most recent colour. Um, I got this, I don't know, January or February, and I really love this colour. I really love it. It's not a colour I would have imagined for myself, but I really love it. I bought it after my daughter was born um, because her name is Skylar, and this is like a sky blue colour, and this reminds me of her. And it's just absolutely beautiful. And I've actually used it quite a bit so far. So this colour is called Berry Neon. Really like it. Really recommend this colour in the Glitterific Folk Art paint. So paint, I don't know. It's like a glitter. It says acrylic, acrylic paint. It is just glitter, really, with the goop so that it sticks. Um, really love it. These are something that I found about a year ago overall. Like I only started collecting these about a year ago and quickly became obsessed with them. I've got a little bundle of them here. They're not cheap, I think. They're quite expensive. Oh my gosh, everything's falling. They're quite expensive, really, but I think they're very worth it. For me, personally, I really love these. Um, I have, as you can see, bought seven of them and absolutely intend to buy more. When I can save up my pennies, I'll, I'll head back into an art store and pick up different colours. I need to restock on my... Uh, tangerine neon as well because it's getting a bit low and the clear holographic one's getting a bit low too um so loved those um this year i have been trying out my hobonichi weeks couldn't be more obsessed with this absolutely if i can if i can if i can uh, if i can justify it to myself i will be buying another one next year new zealand people when we get to Hobonichi purchasing season, if there's anyone in New Zealand who is also wanting to purchase, let me know and we can maybe try and work out like a shipping situation together. It's the shipping that makes these killer. Uh, 
so absolutely absolutely in love with my little weeks couldn't love it more use it every single day constantly using it um you guys have seen my little first quarter flip through of this um i've shared that on on youtube already just recently so absolutely loving this so this is a new to me like i've just been in it this year absolutely loving it i know what all the hype is about now it's just so fun do i think you really need it to be a hobonichi probably not you could probably do the same sort of thing in a lot of different planners but i just love the size i just love it i thought it was going to be too small when i first got it and i absolutely love it so that's a new to me you know kind of find that i'm obsessed with so hobonichi weeks is real good this one i got just the other day like i got it mm, when a week ago tomorrow will be a week ago and it's from Kmart here in New Zealand Australians you'll probably have it too it's new to what I hadn't seen it before in Kmart so I don't know how new it is it came with five very terrible ink pads they were not what I was looking for uh, I just really liked this font and I really liked the size they're quite big um, and they're just a really interesting size they are not super well made in the sense that this J stamp is like the actual stamp part is so far up that the dot is half cut off at the top. Um, but overall, I really love them and have been using them quite a bit since I got them. And that was only $8. So really, really reasonable for an alphabet set, I think. Um, I just really like this stamp set a lot. Um it's a really cute font, so I think these are a really fun new find for myself. Really like these. Um, and then I have this pen, which I found also recently. It's a Schneider for documents pen. Um, it's made in Germany. Don't think that that matters, probably. 0.6. Um, one business. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just enjoying it. It was quite expensive. I definitely think it's a high price pen, for, in my opinion. Um, but I just really like it. I don't know, this is what the nib looks like. It just flows. Let me just get this little scrap of paper here. Um, not a good paper to show you on really, but it just flows really nicely. Um, I liked it. I bet it will be one of those pens that I buy. I really like, and it runs out of ink in like two seconds, but we'll see. Um, I am liking it so far. So that is one that at this point in time I'm recommending, but I've done this before where I've recommended a pen and then being bitterly disappointed the next day. So at this stage, I really like this pen. It's working nicely. This one here was something I got at the beginning of the year too, which is not going to be for everyone. It was just a favorite find for myself. It says love and courage, obviously. And I was very excited because um, I am doing one little word. I told you guys that already, I think. Um, I'm not sure. I filmed the outside part, all of that. And now I can't remember where this question fits in, if it was before or after. Um, I've already talked about it so you guys know what I'm talking about one little word course Um, and uh, my word for this year is courage and finding a tin that said courage for me to hold all of my little bits in here these are like little bits that I've got shoved in here that I want to use in my journaling about my process for the year my one little word journaling it's all tucked in this tin and love is a word that's like an overall word for me for life that is very important to me that I started to learn about this this word and what it means to me when my son was born. And now um, courage is my word now that my daughter's been born. And just finding a tin that said love and courage just felt very special. Um, a very special find. I got it, in case you're interested, I got it at Mitre 10. <laughs> Which for New Zealanders you might be like, oh, didn't expect that. But that's where I found it. And I really love it. And um, it was a great find for me for this year particularly. And it will be a nice treasured memory for in years to come when I'm not working with the word courage anymore, just of this word and the courage I'm finding throughout this year. So that is my finds. Um, yeah, those are my, my little finds that I've really enjoyed from this year. Top little things. Okay, this next question is your top five favorite small business stores and Patreons that, or Patreons, etc., artists that you'd like to suggest to people. This question makes me so nervous because I am sure I'm going to miss people and I don't mean to at all, but um, I'm going to try to say some of my faves. So I am currently a patron of Belinda from Visualized NZ. 
she is someone I'm currently a patron on and so is Jess from Jess from Love Rain Journals. I'm currently a patron of hers. I have been in the past patron of Ronnie from Bad Jones Rising. Her stuff is incredible. Um, I've been a patron of a bunch of different people of Jen Hall whose painty hands art. She does amazing things. I've been a patron of um, Dolly whose Gypsy Rose Paper Magic, I believe. Uh, I've been a patron of Ricky from Star Moth Press. I've been a patron of, oh gosh, it's just so hard to remember because I've been a patron of a lot of different people. Um, I'm trying to remember like who and if they still have Patreon and things like that. Um, but they're all fabulous creators and I absolutely love the things that they do. Um, oh, who else? Um, I'm th trying to think of like Etsy stores that I also think are great. I really love, there's a New Zealand artist who I really love buying her stickers and cards and things like that. She does really lovely art and I'm just trying to think if I've got anything of hers nearby. Um, I don't, I, I mean, I, I do and I don't. I've got them somewhere, but I wouldn't be able to find them in a pinch. But her name is Katie and she is from Southland and she is in my backyard. I'll have her store linked as well. Um, gosh, I just, it's a really hard one because I know I'm going to be leaving someone out and I, I am so sad if you are hearing this and thinking, oh, I thought she would say me. I am saying you in my heart. I've just, in this moment, off the top of my head and really struggling to think of people and it's not because I don't love your art I if I've been a patron of yours or have bought something from your Etsy store I do love your art I am just a, a, a sieve in the brain and my brain is not helping me out today so I but those are some people who I totally recommend totally recommend them absolutely go and follow them um, and support them if you can because they're fabulous people yeah, but I think that's it. I think that's the Q&A, guys, and I have been talking an awfully long time. I can see that we are over an hour, I think. This video will be well over an hour, so it's going to be a long, chatty one. So I hope that you have enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it. I have really enjoyed sitting out here in the sun and just chatting with you guys about crafting and about New Zealand and life and things like that. Um... I hope that you guys are well. And if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to ask them. I will happily do a part two Q&A um, if there's anything else you want to know about anything. And I am, like I said, I'm pretty open and vulnerable re reasonably. So if you want to ask anything about uh, where I live, about my garden, about my life, about James and I, about our children and, and infertility and child loss, um, if you want to ask about journaling and crafty things or anything just whatever family whatever you'd like to know I am pretty open so just let me know and I would happily make a part two Q&A if there's any other questions that you would like to know about me I am an open book so hope you guys are well and I'll see you guys again really soon in my next video bye friends